Taxes, taxes, and more taxes. The question is, should you defer those taxes? Now, I'm a huge proponent of getting as many tax deductions as you can and doing everything that you can to legally lower your tax liability. But with that said, the question is, should you defer your taxes? And I'm gonna lay out some information here and then you can kind of decide. So if, um, what does deferring taxes allow us to do? Well, it does, we're not avoiding taxes. All we're doing is we're kicking the can down the road. We're just simply not paying taxes today and saying that we will pay them in the future. So does it make sense to do that? Well, that kind of depends on what the future holds, right? What's gonna happen in the future? And let me explain what I mean here. So when you look at taxes, if taxes stay the same, does it make sense to defer them? Well, more times than not, there are a few exceptions, but more times than not, when you're deferring taxes, you're also locking up your money and you cannot access that money without penalties. So the question is, if I have to pay the same tax in the future that I have to pay today, but by paying them today, I get access to my capital, it doesn't necessarily make sense to defer those taxes. Now, if taxes increase in the future, it absolutely doesn't make sense to defer them, right? Because why would you pay more taxes in the future than you could just simply pay today and get, get it over with? It does make sense if taxes decrease in the future. So if you anticipate taxes are going to go down in the future, then it makes sense to defer them, right? Assuming that you're okay with tying up your capital. Now there are, you know, you could do like a 1031 exchange with real estate and things like that, which which would make sense to continue to defer taxes indefinitely as you continue to uh, exchange, uh, exchange real estate out. But in most investment vehicles, deferring taxes ties up your capital and you don't have access to it. So let's look at the, the tax environment. Here's a screenshot of the US history or the history of the US marginal tax rate from 1913 to 2019. I pulled this off of the Truth Concepts calculator. So when you look at this, the red bars represent our maximum uh, tax rates in any given year. And you can see that the average over time has been 57.6. That's been our average maximum rate. If you look at this red line in here, that approximately uh, represents that, ma that average maximum rate. Now the tan bars represent our average or represent the minimum rates in any given year. And the average has been 11.6%. So if you can see that tan line that uh, just showed up on the screen, uh, that's where our average minimum rate has been. So if you look at our current tax environment today, you can see that we're well below what the average maximum rate has been in the past or what the average maximum rate has been. And we're just slightly below what the average minimum rate has been. So there's a pretty good argument to say we're in a competitive tax environment. Now, knowing that information, let's turn to the national debt. Now, if you look at the current national debt, we hit an awesome milestone today or yesterday, and that is we are now $22 trillion in debt. Not 21, not 20, we're now $22 trillion in debt. So not something to really be proud of from a, uh, a national standpoint, but that's where we're at at this point. And if you look at that debt, you also have to look at the unfunded liabilities, which those unfunded liabilities are $122.5 trillion. So the question is, how is this national debt gonna get paid, right? Well, it gets paid through the collection of taxes. And so you either, you either have a political environment in, in which they feel like raising taxes to pay this debt off is the solution, or you get in a political environment in which they say lowering taxes to spark business activity is a solution. But right now, our national debt is huge, and if you look at the GDP, we're at about $20 trillion, which means that there's a huge deficit on a, on a yearly basis. So, which way do you think they'll go? Are taxes gonna stay the same going forward? Are taxes going to increase going forward? Or are taxes going to decrease? If you're in the camp that feels like taxes are going to decrease, you've got about a 33% chance that that's going to happen. And if you fall within that cap, camp, it absolutely may make sense to defer your taxes. If you are part of the 66% um, or the 66% probability that they either stay the same or they increase, 
it doesn't necessarily make sense to defer those taxes. So hope that information's helpful and we'll talk to you next time. See ya.